we're going to process these chickens. And uh, so just a little, a little bit of word about that. Um, I don't want to go off into la-la land and mysticism, but it is important to realize the sacredness of life and the responsibility that comes with taking a life. And I think that in general, we earn the right to participate in the life, death, decomposition, regeneration, life, death, decomposition, regeneration cycle as we honor the life in sacredness as it's lived. It's one of the beauties of pastured poultry. Over there you Remember, it's not pasteurized. Pastured poultry is one of the one of the uh, 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 single biggest components of it is that we are trying to create a respectful, honoring life for the bird, which then makes the death a thing of sacrifice as opposed to a thing of sacrilege. That's what separates uh, the act that we're going to do from a place from, from a place that's that's um, uh, without meaning to a thing that is with with meaning. And um, we definitely believe that exposing young children to this is really good to find out the chickens don't talk and the chickens don't they don't they don't understand. Um, and so I'm going to talk you through the process as we go through. But we, even though I've killed you know uh, hundreds of thousands of chickens in my life, I never approach this just um, nonchalantly. It's uh, it's a serious thing. And the question is, have I honored? Have I honored this being in life enough to um, to deserve to be able to take the life in the end? That, that's the question. And so, uh, so we pause to, to appreciate that. Okay. So what we're going to do is, is is we want uh, this to be as as um, no, just grab me one. If I get over there too far. So the, these are these are Cornish cross. Uh, I don't know how old they are, but. Um, I expect they're nine weeks, eight, a little over nine, a little over nine weeks. Yeah, with this kind of bird, a week makes a big difference. <laughs> the difference in eight and nine weeks is the difference of like a pound uh, because they really great. Okay, this is a pretty big bird. Um, do you want it before? Do you want it before I kill it? To get to get a weight before I kill it. Jim, Jim McLaughlin is, this equipment is from Cornerstone Farm Ventures, and uh, uh, so we're, we're just, I'm, I'm an imposter here, Jim's the one guy that has all the stuff, and he's, he's uh, complicating my situation by wanting a live weight. So, we're, so, so what we do is, is we like to grab them kind of like this, and just, and hold the wings, okay? Um, if the bird is crackling and, and carrying on and stuff, um, then you're doing something wrong. Notice this bird, uh, I can I, I can kind of move it around and, and, and putting your finger between the legs like this so that if they start clawing, they don't claw you um, is a critical element. So they're kind of sitting in the palm of your hand, okay? But you notice, I mean, I can turn him around. He's perfectly comfortable and, and, and I've got my hands on his wings, okay? So I'm gonna stick him in head first, okay? Okay. Alright, we'll try again. <laughs> Alright. Yeah. Alright. So we, we, we put them in and um, and and what you're gonna try to do is right here's the waddle, okay? The waddle's right here. So we want to go as close to that as possible. In your own jugular, your your jugular veins come up along your windpipe and then they separate under your under your chin right here. One comes up under your ear here, one comes up under your ear here. Same way the chicken. So the, the closer we get to the head, the better chance we have of catching just the jugular and not hitting the windpipe. So we'll, we'll catch the, and, and you want a good stream of blood right there. That bird is literally flatlined in what, a tenth of a second. I mean, it, 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 it's very, very quick, okay? And whatever convulsions now you see are simply contract, mus muscle contractions like that. The cone keeps the bird from, um, yeah, I'll take another one. 
the cone keeps the bird from uh, keeps the bird from uh, from bruising itself. Um, okay, and and so uh, and the cone also acts as a as a temple grandin. Those of you who are familiar with uh, with temple grandin, um, it, it acts as a as a uh, you know a hug a holder. Okay. Um, so you notice there's no, you know, there's no, uh, um, you know, they, they, they go, they go flatline pretty quick. Okay, let's go pick another one. So we're going to, we're going to kill three and then we're going to pick three and we're going to, um, three more. Okay, so but the point is to get up there as close to the head as possible. The other reason to get as close to the head as possible is that it um, that it means uh, that it, if, if, if you get as close to the head as possible, um, it means when you pull the head off that you're going to get the um, you're, you're gonna you're gonna the neck's gonna separate at the vertebrae and not separate way down the neck. This is basically a, a halal kosher type kill, okay? And um, and we don't do electrocution, we don't do um, uh, you know gassing. Um, uh, this is the, this is the ancient procedure, and it uh, it pumps the blood out of the body. If you go to the store and buy chicken, and you see all that black around the bones, that's clotted blood from lack of bleeding. I can tell you that if these are electrocuted first you'll get about half the blood out of them that we're getting with this um the the uh this is called a sanguination if you want a nice big word and uh, that's what we're after okay i think we're good to go here <coughs> your stockbroker's calling <laughs> okay so then they go into the scalder here yep and um so the thing about these birds is, if you're if you're doing them at home, um, and you don't have this nice equipment, which you should get this, uh, you, there are there are thresholds for getting this equipment. Um, in my opinion, once you pass, look, anybody can dress 20 or 30 birds in your backyard with a wood fire or a pot, you know, or uh, you, you can get to hand pick them and that sort of thing. But as soon as you pass about 100 birds a year, um, you're going to want to you know, you're gonna want to uh, get some equipment. And the beautiful thing is when we, when we started with this, uh, whatever, 40 years ago, um, this kind of equipment was not available. I mean, the, this whole thing was, it, it, it did not exist. And so, um, and so today we have small outfits like this that are selling a lot of this little equipment into the homestead. So it's a real different deal. Um, a lot, lot more available and a lot cheaper. This stuff is a third the price today that we paid 40 years ago for the same stuff. The thing about this this uh, scalder, you, you see them kind of. It, it's a rotary. It's called a rotary scalder. There are scalders that dip, you know, by the legs. They dip, dip up and down. All right. Um, the problem with that is that that uh, the the breast the breast is the most tender part of the bird. The legs are the least tender part, and so if it's just going up and down, legs to you know with the head first, it means that what has been scalded the most uh, is the breast, and what you need scalded the most is the feet. And so the, rot the, the rotary scalder allows 100% of the chicken to be scalded at the same amount uh, all the time. Okay, so um, this is water's about 145 degrees. 145 degrees for, what do you have it set on, a minute and a half, 90, 90 seconds, all right? So now we're gonna put them in the picker, okay? And we're gonna, we're gonna put some cold water on them. That acts as a blanch, like when you're making green beans, canning green beans and stuff. The blanch, the cold, the cold shock on the birds, actually that's what the shower nozzle's for. Um, the cold water on the birds actually helps them to pick faster, to pick better. 
more cleanly. It also helps to wash them off as they're picking so they, so they actually pick better. Okay. We're good. Now Jim, Jim's just going to continue behind me and I'm just going to take these three on, on forward in the process. But um, those of you who've never seen a picker work before, as we say, that's a right purdy chicken. Jim, I can probably flip around so you don't have to jump up here and yeah. put those in the stall. Uh, see, I think I'll just, I'll just leave these in here for now, just not enough for me to work. Okay. All right, so um, you want to you make sure that any little pieces of manure are off your table and off of these. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull the head off. We're not going to cut it off. We're going to pull it off. That ensures that the that the uh, neck breaks at a vertebrae. If we cut it off, then we're going to be we're going to have little bone shards, and you know it's going to be hard to hit that vertebrae. So we just pull the head off. Okay. Then we're going to cut the feet off. All the cuts. All the cuts are in valleys. If you're cutting bone, you're not cutting the right place, okay? So you're cutting in valleys. So if you notice this, this foot here has a, has a valley, has a dip. So we're going, to, we're going to hit that valley right there and just cut straight through, all right? Um, Again, go to the valley, straight through, okay? If you're cutting, if you're cutting bone, something's wrong. Now, so we got we got the feet and we got the head off. Alright? Now, we're gonna flip. <laughs> I've got my monitor over here now. So. Right. so now we're gonna flip the bird around and I'm gonna put my thumb up behind the uh, the tail like this and we'll take the oil sack out. Okay. There's the oil sack. Take that out. And I'm going to flip the bird around. Okay. So remember I said all valleys. Okay. So here in the crop, now I assume these, um, what you want is these birds to come fasting. Uh, if, if, if they're full of feed, it makes a mess. So, so what we're looking for here is this valley right here in the breast. I'm going to just pinch that, and I'm just going to cut that skin, just just barely enough to poke my finger in. And here's the crop right here. Okay, that's why it's important for these birds to come fasting. We like to take the feed away uh, close to 24 hours. You know, somewhere in the neighborhood of 18 hours uh, before slaughter. So if we're going to butcher them. This morning, I want these birds to be out of feed by noon yesterday, okay? So they, so all that feed and grass and stuff comes out through their through their digestive system and they're nice and clean on the Okay. So here's the crop. You can see it right here in, in the breast, okay? And um, so now, now this thing is slick. I mean, it's like snot after birth. I mean, name your slick stuff. It's slick. Okay? I figured this crowd would enjoy the after birth. <laughs> and uh, so, so uh, it, it's real hard to pinch it and, and get loose, all right? So what I do is I grab it and curl my thumb underneath, okay? And and that gives me way more, you know, I kind of catch it under the under the edge of my thumb there and curl around gives me a lot of surface and then switch hands pull loose now I've got it in my left hand and I'm going to just poke my thumb underneath the windpipe and the esophagus okay and I'm going to pull out the windpipe and the esophagus so here's the windpipe there's the windpipe it feels like a like a vacuum cord and there's the esophagus and it goes to the to the um, crop, all right? I'm not gonna cut that off. I'm gonna let that sit, all right? I'm not, I'm not doing anything with that. Here we go, we're gonna pull up on the abdominal cavity here. The reason is because I wanna tighten this up because I don't wanna lose any skin. Everything below my cut, everything below my cut to the vent, I'm gonna lose. 
So if I cut that abdomen way up here being sloppy, I've just lost some more weight, okay? So that's why I wanna pinch it up and cut it as close to the vent as possible. I'm gonna tear it open, okay? Then I'm gonna go in and pull the fat off of the gizzard. So I want that fat, look at all that fat. That's half an ounce, it's 10 cents, okay? I mean, I'm, I'm making it because, listen, the, the secret's in the details, right? It, it, it really is. And uh, and so, and, and, and not only that, but that's where it's at. That's where the taste is. Your customer, when they cook this chicken, that fat's going to be what makes the gravy and the taste and all that. All right. So I'm going to get that fat off, leave that with the carcass. Then I'm going to go in with my fingernails uh, against the, the smooth keel bone. Okay. And I'm going to hook. I'm going to hook the esophagus around my pointer finger, okay? So here comes the esophagus, here comes the crop, okay? It's all hooked, it's all coming out the back of the bird, no breaks, no digestive juices. There's the there's the windpipe, it's all there, okay? Where's all right the heart? here, all right? Now I'm going to roll it over. So here's my heart, my liver. Look at that beautiful liver. That is a gorgeous liver and right here is the thing you don't want that's the gallbladder when i say bitter is gall it's bitter let me tell you i've tasted it it is not good um our son daniel's uh, rule of thumb for this whole procedure here the processing um is there are two rules one is keep your mouth shut <laughs> and the second one is if you feel something on your lip don't lick it <laughs> Those are the two rules of processing. <laughs> we're roll this over and we're just going to pinch that gallbladder off, okay? There's your heart and liver. Uh, this, is this where we're putting everything? Yeah. In this barrel down here with cold water? Okay. So, everybody, I mean, that's a beautiful liver. I hope everybody can appreciate and see that. That's just a gorgeous, gorgeous liver, okay? Good color, everything, okay? All right. And now that leaves the eviscera in my left hand. And I just give it a very gentle tug. And I've got three cuts now left. I'm gonna cut down, I'm gonna pull my intestinal, my intestinal tract to the to the left, cut right down along the vent on this side. Now I'm gonna move it over here, cut right down along, the, I'm sorry, the left side, right and then left, and then I'm gonna cut underneath it. Okay, that's gonna take out the, uh, the last of the viscera. <clears throat> Again. Notice I've left this big glob of fat. This is the pubic fat right here, the, right on the pubic bones. There again, there's another half an ounce. If you do a sloppy job of getting the vent and you just carve out that whole thing, you've just lost another half an ounce of, of flavor and fat, okay? All right, now what's left? Lungs, all right? So we'll go back in and the lungs are down in the rib cage. There's one. Here's the other one. And the ribs, the ribs are perpendicular to me, okay? So I'm not going in clawing this way, I'm going this way. Now, Jim sells a handy dandy little lung puller that you can go in and you can grab them and, and pull them out with a lung puller. I want to do it with my hand just to show you that it, it can be done. I'm not trying to reduce sales, Jim. I'm just trying to, <laughs> trying to do this as simple and gentle as possible um, and empowering as possible, okay? So there's the two lungs, all right? Now we'll um, I'm gonna buy this uh, buy this thing. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna spray this booger out inside a little bit. Off a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Now we're gonna now because we've cut so low, we've got this all this beautiful skin here in the back. We're gonna cut a little tiny incision right here that we can then poke the legs in okay and we have an oven ready bird okay